still undergoing a lot of emotional breakthroughs. I am incredibly thankful for having my life, my family, friends, for catching cancer early, for being able to finish school, and for one of the most stupendous healthcare teams in the world. It's difficult to concentrate on school with all that's happened, and I cannot impart how foreign it is to start over my life when everyone else has been living normally. Currently, I'm going to physical therapy to regain strength and mobility in my neck and shoulder region, and for the rest of my life, I'll have to take one thyroid hormone replacement pill each day. My faith was one of the most important parts of my recovery. I will explain my faith in God as a short anecdote I read from The Secret Life of God by Rabbi David Aaron. There is a man who is in a horrible car accident, and while his car was completely totaled, he was thrown out of the car without a scratch. He went to one of his rabbis a few weeks after the accident, bragging to them, I don't keep kosher, I don't keep the Sabbath, I don't pray three times a day, I don't do half of what you do, and God loves me so much that he saved me. And the rabbi pauses for a second and says, you know, you're so caught up in who saved you, but did you ever think about who pushed you out of the car? <laughs> Cancer was like my push out of the car. Sometimes blessings come in disguise. Mine happened to be a papillary carcinoma. While I was scared, I knew from day one I had a lot to be thankful for. I had a good prognosis, excellent doctors, family, friends, and health. How lucky was I that my lymph nodes swelled up so quickly. All my white blood cells were going to attack my cancer. That's a blessing. This was a distinct difference from before, when I was so afraid of not having control but now at a, I'm at a point where not having control is better because I'm in a higher power. Like I said before, blessings come in disguise. It is our job to look at each opportunity as a blessing or to turn suffering into a strain, which goes back to it being a blessing. Some would say that I'm overly optimistic, but I would say I'm realistic. The Hebrew word for olam is world. The Hebrew word for world is olam, which comes from the root he'elem, which means to hide. This world is only an opportunity for us to seek God in hidden ways, to turn the negative into a positive. Another thing that got me through my cancer was dreaming about Jerusalem. It's an odd interjection here, but I had to put it in. While cancer may have tried to take my life, Jerusalem gave me life. My Judaism gave me life. My family, my friends, my art. Our everyday encounters with those who we love is what gives us life. This is your life. You only have one and you cannot take it for granted. Not for a second. People don't tell each other that they love them enough. Go, call your mom after the speech. Tell your friend you love them. Don't wait for a crisis to get, to get close. Don't jeopardize your relationships. Clear things up with people now. Don't wait. I also have to mention the status of caregivers in this speech. When I got sick, people called to check up on me, but it was almost like everyone else in my family was an afterthought. You need to think of this. Don't be that person who only thinks it's of the sick. It's your duty as a friend to help the person who's sick and their family. It's not easy being a caretaker. The other thing I learned, and, I, and this probably said too much, is that I learned who my true friends are. My best guy friend coordinated visiting hours for my friends so that my parents wouldn't be so bombarded. I didn't ask him. I got a lot of phone calls right after my diagnosis and discharge, but my closest friends still check up on me without me having to ask. They realized that just because I was out of the hospital didn't mean I was completely independent. For a while, I could not drive up or pick up heavy things, which is good because I dislike manual labor. <laughs> Prioritizing my time with closer friends is a beautiful way to honor them. One more point, and it's particularly important, is about the line, call me if you need me. It's really appreciated. It's an extension of love and support, but it's also just probably because you're uncomfortable with overstepping boundaries. But a better thing to say is, what can I do to help? And then offer some things to do. Offer to bring food, take notes, run errands, but especially offer personal space. Here you are turning into the other person's needs and giving them options. If they need space, they'll tell you, but I promise you will not offend anyone by offering them assistance when you listen to them first. All of you in this room have a heightened ability to listen, to love, to care. That's why you're all here. Each and every one of you in this room has been affected by cancer. Maybe it's a family member, a friend, a teacher, or maybe even it's you. The point is that cancer is rampant. It is growing at unprecedented rates and it can strike anyone. But our body of research is always growing, our wealth of knowledge is always expanding, and our hearts are always yearning for a cure. I got lucky with my cancer. 
But not everyone is as lucky. Not everyone has access to the financial resources, emotional support, or immaculate healthcare facilities. I am challenging everyone in this room to act, to donate, to inform, to raise funds and concerns. We are only as strong as we are responsible. We are only as responsible as we are loving. Thank you for your time and God bless.